Okay, well, we'll get this webinar started. Um, my name is Abby Swanson, and I'm the Access USA Program Manager. And Access USA is an organization that connects international students to our 14 private stellar universities here in Michigan. And through our partnership with the universities, we're able to offer dual enrollment like credit for international students to receive credit while they're in high school. Um, today, we are joined by three lovely guests. We are very lucky to have you with us. Um, I'd like to introduce Mr. Lloyd McPartland, who is the Assistant VP of Enrollment and the Director of Admissions at the University of Olivet. So thank you very much for being here with us today. Um, Sorry about you, that. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. I was muted. <laughs> no, you're okay. If you could just um, explain your position and title at the university, that would be wonderful. Yeah, uh, my title uh, is the Assistant Vice President for Enrollment and Director of Admission. So I work closely with all of our incoming first year students, uh, helping them make decisions about attending our university. Um, I manage our staff of recruiters that go out and work with high school students to help give them information about the University of Olivet so that they can make an educated decision about whether or not we'll be a good fit for the school. I've been at the University of Olivet now for a little bit over a year. Um, prior to that, I was at a very like institution uh, for about 14 years in a, in a fairly similar role. So I was very excited about this opportunity here at Olivet and, uh, and just really pleased with, with my time so far. That's great. Um, would you be able to share a little bit of the history of the University of Olivet? I know it's it's quite rich. It is, yeah. And we can, I mean, how much time do we have? Four hours? To, no, no, no. Right? Yeah. So I'll keep it short. <laughs> but overview. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, the University of Olivet was founded way back in 1844. Um, and something that I think is unique to our institution that we're really proud of is that Olivet founded itself on being an inclusive uh, college. And so the founders of our institution were really adamant that they wanted to be an institution that would serve all people. And so here uh, in the United States, it was one of the first colleges to admit persons of color uh, and women. And in fact, the gradu first graduating class of the University of Olivet, I believe was all women which is kind of unheard of back in those days in 1844. Um, it, it actually stalled our ability to become a college or university because the U.S. Uh, government wasn't really thrilled about the fact that we were being so inclusive. And so that has kind of carried through all those years to where today we are doing the best we can to continue that mission of being an inclusive uh, institution that is welcome and affordable for all students. Um, uh, and so we we are, are very proud of that and that rich history, and uh, we we enjoy um, making sure that we're available to all, to all. So, yeah, that's great. That's definitely a unique history. Yeah, um, very cool to hear about. Would you be able to share some of the programs at Olivet and maybe explain why Olivet is a unique campus apart from the amazing history behind it? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Olivet has about 36 different majors that students can participate in. So it, it runs the gamut um, of your, your typical general type majors, you know, biology, chemistry, uh, English. But then we have certainly specialized majors in graphic design, media productions, um, the insurance risk management, which is, is what we're here about today, which is extremely popular and very uh, well ranked throughout the United States. And so for uh, the uniqueness of Olivet, I think is what we provide students is a, a very individualized experience um, where they don't feel like a number. Uh, we're a very small institution. We have around 900 total students on campus. Our class size average is about 15 students per class. So when I talk to a prospective student, I'm really adamant about the fact that they are gonna get really personalized attention. Um, it's just gonna come naturally at a small school like ours. And I know a lot of incoming uh, students get worried about, you know, getting lost in the shuffle. That just doesn't happen at a school like Olivet. We're very, uh, our faculty are uh, uh, very involved in our students. They, they, they are, want them to be successful. 
And what you'll find different here is it's, it's, it's much of a discussion-based learning as opposed to larger universities where I would call it lecture-based, where you just sit there and are frantically taking notes as a faculty member is, is, is spewing information to a, a group of two or 300 people. Here at Olivet and, and Dr. Brown and Dr. Goulet can kind of attest this later, you know, you're going to be in classes, you know, as a senior where it may not be, you might have eight to 10 people in a class and you sit in a circle and you're participating in what's going on. You're an active participant in your education. Yeah, that's wonderful. And that individualized attention when when you're studying in college is it's really invaluable. And so I, I appreciate you kind of speaking to that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think next up we have Dr. Goulet. Dr. Goulet. Um, she is the MBA program director and professor of business. Um, <clears throat> Dr. Goulet. Yep. Hello, everybody. It's a pleasure to meet you. And I'm not only the program director for MBA, I'm actually the department chair um, at the University of Olivet for all of our business programs. So uh, Lloyd mentioned some of our other programs actually in our other departments um, besides insurance, um, which is in our uh, department. But in our department, we also have uh, ma uh, majors in management and finance and accounting and marketing. So we have really all of the business disciplines covered besides insurance. I will say, though, that the insurance um, major is the most popular and it is uh, we have the most enrollment in our insurance program. We are very known for our insurance program. Uh, so I am. So, again, I'm the department chair. Uh, uh, like Lloyd, I've been here just about a year and came from a similar uh, similar institute. Um, and uh, I, I, Lloyd talked about the history of Olivet and um, who who we are and who it, it, and he spoke to our culture. And quite honestly, that's part of the reason why I'm here. I'm I'm really I'm really drawn to the the culture that Olivet promotes. And you know, he he talked about how. Um, the university was the first university in Michigan to uh, admit women and uh, African Americans, and um, that remains a part of our culture today. And you don't hear a person speak from the president to the provost without really referring to our roots, and it's really integrated into who we are in everything we do. And you know, even the programs that we offer, they're all really connected to that basic culture of all of that. Yeah, that's wonderful. And it definitely seems like it's a very welcoming place for, for students to attend. It is. Um, would you be able to share some of the rankings of the business programs at Olivet? Yes, I would love to uh to chat about that. So one of the things when I joined the university, I was just really um, so impressed with was our insurance program and how renowned it is. So, you know, as uh, Lloyd mentioned, we're a university of around a thousand students. So we're not big, you know, we're, we're relatively small university. However, we have, um, we're so known in the industry. We're so known with the insurance industry and with insurance companies about our program, uh, we are ranked um, nationally third uh, for our insurance program. And we're going up against universities that are 10 and 20 and 30 times our size. Uh, so we're, uh, we're actually ranked third. We're always ranked usually in the top three, uh, but most recently we're ranked third by Best Review Magazine. And Best Review is uh, an organization that holds insurance companies. So these are insurance companies who are ranking these programs. This isn't just, you know, some, you know, academics. These are, are the people that hire our graduates. And um, so we rank third uh, from in, uh, insurance companies around the country. So we're, we're pretty proud of that uh, because we are, uh, we are so much smaller than um, our, our competitors, I think, in the, in the industry. Uh, but we have such a rich and robust history um, and our our insurance company partners really support us, and not just in terms of you know 
we even have some of them who teach for us. So there are subject matter experts and they teach for us, but they support in terms of mentoring our students. In fact, Greg will probably talk about it um, when he talks, but he's actually just got done teaching students, um, at high school students insurance uh, classes. And he's at one of our uh, insurance company partners. He's at Farm Bureau uh, Insurance right now. That's where he teaches it because we have such a rich partnership. So that speaks to our ranking. But besides that, um, our students have just really rich opportunities part to participate in the industry through a variety of events. So we have um, on campus, we have a, a student organization called uh, Gamma Iota Sigma, and almost all of our insurance students are a member of Gamma Iota Sigma. And this group um, is engaged in all of the national activities, but the, the biggest one that they uh, participate is in the fall, where they participate in, a, uh, there's a conference, uh, Gamma Iota Sigma has a conference, and our students attend the conference, but then they also are competing. So this year, this Last fall, fall of 23, um, the uh, Gamma Iota Sigma picked 10 uh, of the top uh, insurance programs in the country. And then those 10 actually competed at this conference. And we are proud to say that the University of Olivet actually won that competition. And so that, you know, in my mind, that ranks us as the number one <laughs> insurance program in the country. So, and we were competing against schools that are far larger than us. Uh, but our students did just just dynamite. And uh, so the, the, the specific award is called the Edward Bowers Award uh, for being the best uh, chapters, a beta, gamma iota sigma uh, chapter in, I, I don't think it's even just the country. I think it's in the, the, the world, <laughs> in the universe. So we're, we're pretty proud of that. In addition, our students have opportunities to attend um, agency conferences, industry conferences. Um, our uh, Tom uh, Humphreys, who is our program director for insurance uh, program, he is taking uh, students the end of this month to uh, Florida State uh, University in uh, Southern Florida, and they're gonna be participating in an insurance sales competition. Uh, they're gonna be going, uh, additionally going to an agents confer conference in a, and I think it's in a month. And um, then there's another industry conference uh, uh, that's kind of similar to a Lloyd's of London that is going to be happening before the end of the semester. So lots of uh, lots of really rich opportunities. Our students, and and it's not just the top ten students. Most students have opportunities to travel, participate, present compete on a national level. So not just the seniors or the you know the the chapter, yeah, the beta gamma iota sigma chapter, uh, you know, board, it's everybody. And in, in fact, our director of the insurance program, he intentionally brings freshmen to that uh, conference in the fall to give them that experience. Well, that's wonderful to hear about the experiential learning opportunities at Olivet and the industry connections that you've worked hard to build. Um, that's just great that that students have these these opportunities. Um, you mentioned how at a school like Olivet, there is a close relationship with faculty and the student, and how that often results in mentoring the student. And so, can you kind of talk about some of the benefits associated with building a relationship like that? Absolutely. So, first and foremost, faculty are advisors. So, and that's not always the case at a lot of universities, especially bigger universities, they actually have a staff of advisors and the advisors only job is really to sign up students for classes and to mentor them and to talk to them about what majors they should be in. That's not who we are. Our faculty are our mentors. So people like uh, Tom Humphreys, who's our program director and Greg and I, we, sit down with the students. We work out their schedule. We talk to them about, you know, where are your interests? You know, what classes, what elective classes would really fit with your major? So we really get to know the students, not just in the classroom, in the classes that we're teaching, but also, you know, they, they're coming to our office. I, as I mentioned earlier, I, um, 
came from another university, I have never seen students come to our office. We have an office suite, which probably with about eight or 10 offices, we have at any given time, we have six to 12 students in our office, just hanging out, talking to faculty, doing homework, working on group projects. I mean, it's a very collaborative environment and it, it's, a, it's a relationship that I've not seen at other places. So it's, it's just really, it's, it's really a rich environment. Um, additionally, we have um, at the University of Olivet, we have, we, we use a model called relationship-based learning or relationship-based education. And so what that means is we're really trying to create a rich, vibrant environment, both inside the classroom and outside the classroom. And that um, relationship-based learning is not just for students on campus. This is a model we use for everything, for online classes, for on-campus classes. It's It really speaks to who we are. And I talked about earlier about our culture and our relationship-based education really speaks to that culture so well. Um, and it creates just a really trusting um, and genuine connection with the students. I mean, we have students come into our office all the time, you know, saying, okay, I'm, I'm struggling with this class. You know, can you help me? Can you give me a mentor? Or, you know, or sometimes they even come in, they talk with us about other things too. So it's just, it's, it's, as I said, it's like, unlike an environment I've not ever seen anywhere else. And, um, and it, it's, it really is beneficial for students, I believe. Yeah, I can I can imagine that that helps um, students stay connected to the university and and feel like they have someone kind of in their corner advocating for them. It and does, and we do. You know, we also we're so we're pretty connected, especially in this program. We're connected to so many industry professionals that you know they're coming to us and saying, "I I've got a job opening, or I have an internship. Who can you recommend for us?" And you know, we're able to. Most of these insurance, you know, students, a lot of them have jobs before they even graduate, or six months before they graduate. So it's really, it's it's really terrific to be a part of that. Yeah, that is. I mean, that's that security there must yeah. must be great for the students. That's wonderful. It is. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Goulet. You're welcome. I really appreciate your time. Um, next up, we have our wonderful faculty member who will be teaching the insurance and risk management course. Um, we have Dr. Gregory Brown. He's the MBA faculty member here at um, the University of Olivet. And so I'll just give him a moment to introduce himself and explain um, his title at the university. Well, good morning or good good evening where you guys are. I'm, I'm Professor Brown. My title is Dr. Brown, but I go by Professor Brown with the students. Uh, so I'm an adjunct professor. I teach dual credit high school, teach undergrad, accounting, insurance, business classes, and I teach MBA operations management and essentials. Um, I started in insurance about 15 years ago. I was out in the field. I was a producer for a couple of years, and then I got hired into the district office to be uh, the district trainer. So if uh, somebody came in to our office looking to open an agency, I would be the one um, that will hold their hand for the next nine to 12 months while they got up and running. Um, I crossed uh, paths with uh, Tom Humphreys. You've heard his name probably a dozen times already. And uh, it was actually about something unrelated. And he asked me if I had my MBA. And I was like, I do. And so I started teaching at Olivet about eight years ago. I started with the high school insur insurance class, and uh, it's grown into what it is now, um, teaching MBA undergrad and uh, still teaching the dual credit insurance class. So, Wonderful. Thanks for um, the little summary of your industry experience. That's really, that's really interesting. Mm -hmm. um, what makes the Olivet Risk Management Program valuable for student development? <clears throat> Uh, there, there's a couple things that do. Uh, so I'll break this into two or three pieces here. Um, the history of our insurance program, we had Carol Breed, Claire Stevens, and Mike Hubble uh, were three pillars in the insurance industry in, the, in Michigan. And uh, by some force of nature, they all decided to teach through Olivet. Uh, they're all in the Michigan Hall of Fame. We actually have a Hall of Fame for insurance people. And they really grew the 
the insurance program at Olivet. Um, all three of them have retired and moved on, um, but we feel that we've replaced them. I mean, there's no actual replace in those three, uh, but we have real strong people in their place. So that that's uh, part of the strength was how the program started uh, with those three individuals. Our industry relationships are a huge part of it. Uh, when you come to Olivet and you get an insurance degree, doing internships is a requirement of that, which means you have to find uh, insurance companies that are willing to work with you. But all the insurance companies know Olivet University is the go-to place for insurance students. Uh, some relationships are, are really good. We actually just won an award for our relationship with Farm Bureau. That's where I'm at right now. I, I work here in the mornings and I drive down to the University of Olivet in the afternoon and do my undergrad program. Um, but there's a real strong commitment from the local insurance companies to, to make this a strong program because the insurance industry in general, there's a lot of retirement, as with a lot of industries, but specifically in insurance. And so uh, these insurance companies are somewhat in crisis mode with hiring. So they're really excited to, to help make the program as good as they can. Um, then there's also the the traveling that our insurance program does. Every other year, uh, students are able to swing it, um, go to uh, Lloyd's of London on a Europe trip. And then throughout the year, there's five or six different trips. I think uh, Linda mentioned the, the trip down to Florida State. There's a potential trip to Dallas. There's a trip to Chicago, the different conferences. So uh, between the, the, the real strong history of how the program was built, the um, the commitment by the local insurance companies, and then not just sit down and read a book, but you're going to to live this program if you get into insurance, uh, make our program really strong. Yeah, again, I, I think the experiential learning opportunities can't be stressed enough and how valuable those are for student success. Um, you mentioned that there was quite a bit of openings in the industry currently. Is that could you talk a little bit more about that? Sure. Well, it, it's twofold, right? If we're if we're talking about the Lansing area, there's you know twelve thousand insurance jobs just in Lansing. There's six home offices, so it's a great fit with our our niche here in the general Lansing area, um, and with the whole retirement thing. But on a global basis, uh, there's a company called Swiss Re. They're a really large insurance company in Europe, and they just released a a report uh, regarding the G20 countries and that the insurance jobs over the next 10 years are going to double um, in the G20 um, countries. And they specifically mentioned that India uh, was going to be a leader in that, that the insurance jobs are really going to grow in India. I did other a little more research uh, as well last night prepping up for this. And um, <laughs> just as a side note, um, on Indeed, which is a, a, a website where you post your resume and try to get jobs, there's 98,000 insurance jobs posted uh, worldwide right now. So it's a growing industry. It's insurance. It's uh, recession proof. So if the economy turns down, people still have to, to buy insurance and uh, insurance is going to be here. It, it's a great tool uh, to manage risk and um, people will continue to need insurance. Wow, I mean those numbers are staggering. That's that is really wild to hear. Um and so, you know, it's and it's also great to hear that there are, you know, there's domestic options for students here in the US, but this really could be a global career if a student chooses to do so. And what was the number of of openings globally again? Well, according to Indeed, I didn't have a chance to fact check this, but on the internet, it said that Indeed had 98,000 insurance jobs posted worldwide. Yeah, that that is really, that is something. And and the fact that this the job security in the field is, is also mm -hmm. a, a huge benefit. Um, so who exactly would you say the risk management and insurance program is for? What kinds of students are typically attracted to this field and are there any prerequisites that the students might might need? Yeah, well, let, let me backdoor into this for a little bit because for a long time, at least here in the United States, 
when you got into insurance, it's because you did something else for 20 years and then you kind of backdoored into it. The whole let's have an insurance degree is a newer concept. Um, the thing with insurance, it, it really is for everybody. When you look at there, there's two ways to go. All right. So you can be an insurance agent over here where you go sell. So if you're a people person, you're a hustler, um, you, you're good at selling, you can make a wonderful career over here. Over here, you have the home offices, right? So the agents sell on behalf of the home offices. At the home offices, you'll typically have 1,000, 3,000, 5,000 people working at a home office. And then it's whatever you like. If, if you like marketing, there's a marketing department. If you like accounting, there's an accounting department. Investments is a huge part of the insurance industry. After they collect all the money from everybody, right? It doesn't go in a coffee can on the back shelf. They invest it. So really, uh, if you like helping people, um, the agency side is great of it. You can get into the claim side at the home office. Um, but whatever your interest is, you can find that, find that tied to an insurance company. Um, you, you have to be a self-starter, though. Right. If you're looking for somebody to to lead you around, um, this might not be the opportunity for you. If you're willing to step up and and make decisions and you know put the effort in to you know to be the best you you can be, um, then the insurance industry is a is a great way to to let that shine. Wonderful. Yeah. Thank you for kind of breaking down the two different components and paths that students might take after they mm -hmm. pursue this career. Um, what could you maybe just discuss some of the coursework that the students would be involved in? Yeah, I'm going to throw up a slide here a second as well for that. Uh, let's see here. All right. Yeah. So there's. Uh, all right. So what we have, the, the class is really split into into three sections. And again, this this is the beginning class of a series of eight or nine classes to get through the entire insurance program. Uh, but it's insurance and risk management. It's not just insurance. And so by risk management, we look at risk management two ways. And so let's just say that we're out running a business, maybe not necessarily an insurance business. Every business has to address risk. All right, whether it's hazard risk, right? Could a, a tornado come through? Could a tree fall on our building? Could it catch on fire? Um, could something happen, you know, with a business risk? Could we have a pandemic? Could inflation hit? Could we have an economic downturn? Uh, you know, different financial risk are out there, operational risk, our system set up, or people getting hurt. And so we spend the first couple of weeks addressing how a business would look at and deal with all their risk, right? So we put a package together and the name for that is enterprise-wide risk management, okay? What we determine out of this is there's several tools to use for a company to manage risk. And one of the most prominent tools is insurance. And so then we pivot into insurance specifically and we spend the last two thirds of class talking about insurance. So first, uh, in the middle third of class, we'll talk about how insurance works. What are the different departments? What's the difference between underwriting, actuary, claims? What do the numbers look like? You know, what is a loss ratio? What is a combined ratio? Um, how do we find customers? How do we rate customers? How do we develop the policy? How do we determine the rates? That stuff is all talked about in the middle part here. And then the last third of class is the actual insurance contract. So an insurance policy is technically a contract. So we cover some contract law. Uh, we talk about how the policy um, is structured. Uh, like if you buy a home policy, uh, at least in Michigan, there's six different coverages on that, that policy, and there's different rules that apply to each of those sections. So uh, that third part of class, we'd go through and say, hey, all right, this is the part of the home policy uh, if your house burns down that's covered. Um, if uh, something happens to uh, your pool in your backyard, that's covered under a different coverage. Your personal property, you know, how is that covered? That's a different coverage. What if my house burns down 
I'm not just going to, you know, pitch a tent out in the street. I need to live somewhere. How does the insurance company come in and help the insureds with that? What if I get sued? What if my dog bites somebody and I get sued? What if uh, I have guests over and somebody trips and falls off my back deck? How is that handled? Uh, so we talk about that in the insurance contract uh, piece of it on how are the policies set up, what, what's in this section, what's in the declaration section, what are the conditions, uh, what are endorsements, what are the exclusions that can apply to a contract. Now, we don't necessarily go really deep into any one section. That'll come, you know, if you choose to go on with Olivet and, or any school that teaches insurance the the following classes will go deeper into the different pieces of it, but we do a pretty good overview where you're going to be pretty well versed in insurance in general. And if nothing else, you'll have a really good understanding of insurance when you go to be a consumer out in the market. And a lot of cases we joke that people that come through this class will know more about insurance than the person that's selling them insurance when they go to buy an insurance. <laughs> Yeah, this just sounds like a really excellent class for really anyone who, you know, it has a oh, lot of world applications. Um, that's great. So you mentioned that this is one class out of an eight to nine class sequence. What mm -hmm. would be some other classes in that sequence that students could look forward to taking? All right. Well, the, the students in my class, they're working towards an AINS certification, which is a three-class series. So the next two classes would be personal insurance, where we dive into the individual policies in a lot more depth. Uh, we'll spend a couple weeks talking about the auto policy just by itself. We'll talk, spend a couple weeks talking about the home policy just by itself. Next class after that would be commercial insurance, where we take all the same philosophies, but we apply them uh, to to business exposures. What if you own a building? You know, how do I uh, insure or protect all the computers? What if uh, an employee gets hurt? All right. Uh, we have um, a sales class. Uh, we have a marketing class, which is a little bit different. We have an agency class, you know, how to open an agency, the specifics of that. We have a licensing class um, in the United States. If you want to sell insurance, you have to have a uh, specific licenses based on what kind you're selling. So we have uh, classes that, that cover that as well. Great. Thank you for explaining that. Mm -hmm. um, just a few more questions. Yeah, um, I'm here all day. <laughs> <laughs> Would you be able to discuss some of the achievements that some of your previous students and have been able to achieve um you know what kinds of jobs are they working what with what companies yeah yeah um and that that's the fun part is you know when i work with the dual credit students they're 16 17 years old they're thinking about getting into insurance if they choose to go down to Olivet in person, then I get to see them. But the cool part is when they graduate. And I just had, uh, Kirsten just came to my office the other day and I'd made her that promise that the biggest problem she would have when she graduated is, is uh, choosing out of all of her job offers. And she came into my office and she had three specific job offers, one here at Farm Bureau that she actually did not take, one with Hastings Mutual. And I, I forget the name of the third one. Um, but as you know, as I watch LinkedIn and see where these people are, they they are all over the state of Michigan. They are all over the nation at the at the different insurance companies. There's not one that necessarily gathers them all. I know at Accident Fund sells workers' compensation. Eric Dottie's over there, um, and uh, Fritzel is over there. Uh, I had you know I've interacted with both of them at Olivet. Kirsten's going over to Hastings. Uh, Eric Nisla is here at Farm Bureau. Emma Childs is here at Farm Bureau. Um, again, they're just, they're, they're scattered all over the United States. And I, I follow, them, follow them on LinkedIn. It's just really cool to see them grow. Uh, sometimes I'm able to get them to come back and guest speak in class as well, but they're just, you know, they're being, as soon as they graduate, they're being gobbled up. I have one student in my high school class who's already been hired into Farm Bureau. He he had all of his high school credits uh, done except for one class. He got the school to agree to a co-op, so he's doing his last high school class 
online. He does my class in the morning. Then he goes up and works in the claim office until five every day, uh, learning what mental exhaustion is. An adult is can't teach that in a classroom. So, <laughs> yeah, they're, they're, it's just wonderful to see him grow in the industry and and to follow him on LinkedIn. Yeah, absolutely. It sounds like your students are well sought after. So that's yes. really that's awesome to hear. Would this course be beneficial for students who maybe don't want to pursue insurance necessarily, but it, would this be applicable to other fields as well? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, twofold. One, just as a consumer, right, uh, especially for the younger students, 17 or 18, they're going to have to go buy car insurance for the first time uh, in the next year or two. And after taking this class, like I said, they probably have a better understanding of the policy than the agent does. Um, just all the ins and outs, the exclusions, the endorsements. Uh, the big thing is, is that you learn the language of insurance. So when you go to be a consumer, you understand what the what the person selling you the insurance is asking. You know which questions to ask. Do I, you know... What, if if an insurance agent is offering you a product, you know to ask, oh, am I being covered on an actual cash, cash basis or is this on a replacement cost basis? Huge difference in the coverage that your average person on the street doesn't understand. But after coming through class, you know, the difference between actual cash value and replacement costs is as simple as two plus two. It comes to you that quick. Um the other part is, is any business you go into, even if you don't specifically go into insurance, uh, as soon as you have 50 or more employees at a business, they're going to have an insurance department there. There's going to be one, if not more people dealing with insurance for that company. And this gives students a leg up, uh, more opportunities to, to grow at their individual business because there will be an insurance department or if they choose to go be an entrepreneur and go open their own business, they're going to have to buy insurance and they'll understand the language. They'll understand what different types of insurance are that they really should buy and what kinds that they could buy as well. So there, yeah, there's endless uh, advantages of taking this program, even if insurance ends up not being your path. Wonderful. Yeah. It sounds like there's really endless opportunities when it comes to this insurance program. So that's, it's just mm -hmm. so cool to hear about that. Thank you. Yeah. Just one last question for you, Dr. Brown is mm -hmm. why, why would you say this class is worthwhile for the student? This, uh, from what they grow and learn, everything that we just talked about, about the walking knowledge, understanding the language of insurance, uh, but in my specific class in the morning, at least the one I'm teaching face to face, uh, we teach a lot of soft skills as well, right? We're we're in here uh, in Farm Bureau's home office. We have guest speakers. What other high school student is going to be exposed to the CEO and seven uh, vice presidents at different times of the year coming in and guest speaking? And it's not even necessarily that they're explaining a balance sheet, but they get to see how these guys dress. They get to see how they carry themselves. They get to see how the language they use. Um, we had uh, the lead litigator for Farm Bureau came in a couple of years ago. This is one of my favorite examples. Uh, nice lady. I would not want to end up on the other side of a courtroom from her. But the girls, three weeks later, were still talking about how she accessorized herself, which might sound like, oh, that's a little too stylish. But, you know, uh, having that right look in a professional environment is very important. And it was just a, a great visual for them. So so you have the soft skills. You get to interact with the professionals. Um, but to pat myself on the, bat a little, uh, on the back a little bit, you know, I, I, I also have the accounting degree. I teach business classes. So in addition to insurance, I can really tie it in to how it affects different businesses and different business situations. Um, another nice thing for this class, this class specifically, is the students all come from different high schools, so they're not in their clique anymore. They have to meet students from other schools. And they have to interact with students with other schools. So it helps uh, develop their, uh, you know, their personal um, levels as well. Yeah, wonderful. 
Well, um, are there any last remarks, anything that you think you might have forgotten to say that you'd like to, to share now, Dr. Brown? Uh, yeah, I'll share one more. I just thought of two. Another advantage of them is this is actually a college course. So it's a dual credit, right? So they're used to doing high school courses with the uh, with the load of a high school course and the demands of a high school course. This course um, exposes them to what a college course looks like, at least from a load requirement, and um, you know what what we're going to accept, what we're not going to accept. This is the writing we accept, and it helps prep them uh, just for college courses in general too. Um, on that note, I have one more question for you, Dr. Brown. Mm -hmm. um, could a student take this class and transfer it to another university? Yes. So what that'll depend on is what the other university accepts. So like here in Michigan, there's a couple other schools that also have insurance degrees. So if a high school student chooses to come here and they earn their nine Olivet credits, then they decide to go to one of the other schools that teaches insurance, all nine will probably transfer. Uh, if they go to the Davenport's business program, all nine will transfer. Uh, some of the other schools will only accept three or six because they're electives. Maybe so I had one student that decided to go into uh, supply chain management over at Michigan State, and I think they took three of the nine. But um, from Olivet's side, we are willing to transfer them. It really depends on what the, the school that they're going to is willing to accept. Great. Thank you very much. You bet. This might be a, a more broad question and any three of the panelists feel free to chime in. But what is something that we could get out of the University of Olivet that we couldn't get elsewhere? I, I'm ha I'm happy to start, and then the rest of you uh, um, weigh in. I and I spoke to it already, but I think our relationship-based learning model is really really speaks to who we are, um, speaks to our our culture. Um, you're going to have a relationship with your faculty. You're going to have a, a strong relationship with the other students in the class. But you have you know deeply committed faculty who are invested in your education and and also committed to helping you to that next step, whatever that next step is, you know, whether it's, you know, taking more insurance co uh, classes or transferring somewhere else, or, you know, I, I've had students come back to, come back to me, you know, I, that I had as freshmen come back to me, you know, three years later, hey, do you have any, you know, do you know anybody that's looking to hire? You, you know, we are, once you're our student, you know, we're connected to you forever. Greg mentioned LinkedIn. A lot of us will have a LinkedIn sort of, um, activities in our classes where they have to connect with us. So we keep connected with them really forever and, or until we get rid of our, our LinkedIn account. So uh, I think that relationship based and that relationship that we build in that class really is something that, you know, I haven't seen anywhere else. I would, you know, uh, for, for the students that are on the, the the webinar today, you know, if you're still in high school, it doesn't quite pertain to you just yet. But if you experience this and you, you know, decided to attend the University of Olivet, one of the things that separates us from most other schools, specifically our direct competitors, is that we offer what's called the Olivet Advantage, which is that we guarantee that you will graduate in four years. Um, we set up an academic plan before you step foot on campus or right when you step foot on campus with your academic advisor. As long as you stick with that plan, we guarantee you'll be done in four years. In the United States now, it average to graduate a college or university is about five to five and a half years. And so we can save you that year. We're in your fifth year. Um, if you attended Olivet, you're not going to school anymore. You're not paying tuition. You're not incurring any debt. You're hopefully out in the workforce working, uh, earning a significant income. And so um, if for any reason, by following our academic plan, you're not done in four years, if you have to take a class or two or a semester in your fifth year, then Olivet will cover that cost. That's how confident we are that you'll be done in four. Wow, what an excellent program that is. That's really cool to hear. Um, one, this is another kind of general question, and I, all three of you can chime in if you'd like, but if I'm an international student, and I come to the University of Olivet, what kind of support will I receive? Well, when I teach a, a class, 
whether it's local or international. I make myself available outside of class time. Worst case scenario by Zoom. Uh, this week I had three Zoom meetings with different students. Uh, maybe our our schedules just don't match and I have to jump on the computer at home uh, to support them because we can't get times to cross or we're, you know, somebody's uh, commuting to all of that. So uh, the one thing I, I commit to my students, is, well, two things. One, I, I know who you are. If I run into you at the grocery store, at the grocery store, I know who you are. I'll be able to call you by name. Now that doesn't necessarily pertain to our our potential India students, um, but uh, students from India, um, I would assuming that we could uh, pull this off electronically. I would always be available to set up a meeting and talk one on one over a Zoom call, just like this, to help you out with whatever. And I, I make that promise to all my students here in country or out of country. And we're, you know, we're used to, um, you know, we're used to doing this sort of thing in off hours. We teach, you know, in our MBA program, we teach uh, classes that typically run in the evening for us here in, in Michigan. Um, but they're like kind of outside normal business hours. And we really, we really flex to whatever works because most of those students are, you know, working professionals, you know, uh, being able to talk to them or work with them during the day is not going to work because they have, you know, jobs and things. So we're, we're used to having, um, you know, working in schedules and time zones that don't necessarily align with ours or working outside of, you know, what we would call standard operating, uh, you know, operating hours. Hope that helps. The other thing that I would add too, is we have a really strong, um, what's called student development department, which is uh, full-time staff members that are here to support our students in all different avenues. Um, we have uh, Joey Shepard, who helps students that, that might need additional support in their classes. Um, but the key one for, for incoming new students would be Marjorie Newman. She's the director of uh, what's her uh, transitions and academic success. And so her whole job, along with our, um, uh, uh, what do we, the success navigators, are there to help our students as they are progressing through this transition from high school into college. And so we don't leave it to you just to figure all that out. There's a whole team of people that are here to make sure that once you step foot on campus, um, we're making sure that you know where to go, you know what to do, you're going to class, you, if you need help in class, we'll get you that help. And so it's like I mentioned earlier, it's just really hard for a student to fall through the cracks. Um, and, and so that student development office is, is one of the main things that we have that support any incoming new student. Wonderful. Yeah, this, this small school really does help keep the student accountable and, and that's, that's wonderful. Um, maybe this is a question for Dr. Brown, but what would you say to a student who is on the fence about joining this class? To do it, go ahead and join. Uh, the worst thing that's going to happen is you're going to get a lot of uh, personal information that will help you with your with your personal decisions in the future. Give it a try. Take the first class. Uh, if you like it and you decide it's a career, then you're that much farther ahead. Worst case scenario, you have a lot of really good personal knowledge that will help you uh, with your future, taking care of your family and and. Uh, you know, at work decisions. Yeah, there really are no downsides, it seems. Um, and Mr. McPartland, if you want to discuss the next steps for students as far as registration goes and the learning management system, just briefly, I think that yeah. would be helpful. Yeah, the learning management system is is something that, that you would use as a student once you, if you decide to join the course. Um, Dr. Brown and Dr. Goulet know it a little bit more than I do, but basically it's a hub of where you would get information about the class, where you would access Zoom links, where you would access course syllable, those kinds of things. I don't know if Dr. Brown or Dr. Goulet would want to add any more about that. The one that we use currently is a, a system called Canvas. So did I, did I cover most everything that's in that system or, and what you all use it for? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you look for a great, your grades are, all your grades are posted there. You submit any assignments there. Uh, there is an integrated, as uh, Lloyd mentioned, there's uh, Zoom links integrated into the learning management systems. There's also, um, 
There's also um, areas for video where students can go in. Sometimes we create video assignments where so students can go in, create videos for you know to turn in and submit through class. Um, so it's a very rich uh, learning management system with a lot of um, options for students to be able to collaborate um, with their one-on-one -on -one with their professor to have peer-to-peer -peer interactions, to do group work. There's uh, really robust group areas. So it's it's a real robust uh, learning management system. And then as far as uh, getting secured with the class, there'll be a very simple, uh, I would call it application, but it's more of a form that you would fill out um, basically so we can gather information about you as a student and get you connected to the right people. Um, the right people in this case would be our registrar, Leslie Sullivan, who would work with you to get you registered for the course. Um, and then you would be all set and ready to rock and roll. Perfect. Thank you very much for if sharing. I can, if I can throw one more thing on top of that, uh, it would just be an all-inclusive uh, registration. So we've worked it out with the publisher that we use where um, you would just make your one-time payment. You wouldn't have to go hunt down a book or this or that. You just sign up for the class, uh, any book costs or whatever, would be tied into that one payment that you make. So you don't have to uh, track down a bunch of extra phone numbers or or um, books or this or there or the other thing. It'd be just the one big package for you. Perfect, thanks for sharing that. Do we have any last remarks from any of the panelists that they'd like to share? I would just wrap up by saying it has been a pleasure to, to chat with everyone and um, we'd be excited for anyone that would be interested. Um, we we would love to grow our Olivet family as much as we can. And growing outside the United States is a, a very important piece to us here on a part of our strategic plan and a part of that mission that we started with, which was to be inclusive to all. So just want to thank everybody for their time. Yeah, I would just uh, mirror that. And uh, also, I'll put my email address in the chat here. But if you have questions that we didn't cover, or you think of something in the next day or two that you didn't, uh, that, you know, we didn't, you know, answer, uh, please don't hesitate to reach out. I, I'd throw in one more little tidbit. This, this might sound a little off the wall, but in a prior life, I taught driver ed and I've actually given driving lessons to people from 47 different countries, India included. I've probably given driving lessons to 25 to 30 people from India. So if a concern is, uh, is there going to be some sort of barrier uh, between uh, our culture and the professor, I'm, I'm pretty well versed in working with people from India. So that, that would not be a, a stumbling block for us. I'm pretty confident we can get past that. Well, wonderful. Thank you. Thank you to the three of you for spending the morning with us and exposing the students to the insurance and risk management program at the University of Olivet. It's been a real pleasure um, getting to know you a little bit better and, and hearing about all of the amazing benefits of this program. So thank you so much. Um, students, we have Mr. Jacob has released a link in the chat for you to sign up. Um, if you fill out that form, and someone from our team will reach out and help you get registered for this course. So if there's nothing else, um, thank you very much for your time and we hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you all. Thank you everybody. Great to yep. chat thank with you today. Bye-bye. Bye, thank you.